Peter, like a lot of folks, you have more than one window open at a time. You are writing an email and also checking what one of your friends just posted on Facebook that interrupted your viewing of the last cat video on YouTube. And when you hear that chime that tells you that you've received an email to the email you just sent to someone else. And for the last 20 minutes, though, you've been on your phone with the company that puts you on hold listening to elevator music, waiting for an actual live person with a pulse to finally get on the line. Well, did I describe anything that you're familiar with? Have you ever experienced that? Yeah. I, I certainly have. Um, some of you, well, some of us are a little hesitant to admit that we've done that, probably. How many of you have no idea what I just talked about the last two minutes? Now, if you're not, you know, that computer, you know, that much on the computer or anything like that, well, you probably don't. But, well, your whole day seemed to go like that. By this time, by the time well, that you get to the end of it, you're feeling a bit exhausted and it doesn't feel like you've accomplished hardly anything. But then one of your coworkers stops by and comments about what a good multitasker you are and it really strokes your ego. And of course, you agree with them and think to yourself how fortunate your employer is to have someone like you working for them with your skill set. As you gulp down that microwave meal you just heated up, checking your email and the last two Twitter feeds on your phone. Now for many of us, this scenario is perhaps a little too familiar. We like to believe that we have that ability to do more than one thing at once, right? To be able to multitask. Because, well, we think it demonstrates that we're intelligent, perhaps a little above average. Especially when it comes to sorting things out, staying on top of things. A lot of folks, though, when, when putting together a resume, will even write down good multitasker as a skill that they would like their prospective employer to believe that they possess. It seems that somewhere along the line, they've gotten the idea that this is a positive attribute. But is it really? First, we must answer the question, is anyone actually capable of multitasking? Is our brain even capable of focusing on more than one thing at a time? Well, according to the Center for Brain Health, the answer is a solid no. And if we try to do so, it exhausts the mind, drains the, our cognitive resources, and decreases our mind's sharpness. Dr. Sandra Chapman, director of this institute, says this. Chronic multitaskers also have increased levels of cortisol, and that is the stress hormone, which, by the way, can actually damage the area of the brain that uh, keeps our memories. <coughs> the reality is that true multitasking is a myth. Our brains are designed to do one thing at a time. And when we believe we are multitasking, in reality, we are simply switching back and forth between several different things at the same time. We should all take note of this the next time we try to answer the phone, or even worse, answer a text while we are driving our car. I would bet about everyone here has witnessed someone uh, when you were driving down the highway, weaving a bit, and even crossing the center line, and when you got to the point where you were able to pass them, you noticed they were like this, right? Or 
or is looking down. Perhaps, you know, uh, doing this while they, their knees were steering. Oh, no one here has ever done that, I'm sure. <laughs> well, that is a problem in our society today with the advent of cell phones. And if we keep this up, distracted driving will actually surpass drunk driving as the number one cause of accidents in the United States. The National Highway and Transportation Administration makes this statement on their website. The impairments associated with drunk driving and texting while driving are very similar. Both cause distracted, distraction and impaired driving that, cause, that can result in following too closely, not being able to brake on time, or weaving into oncoming traffic. Drivers who are texting while behind the wheel have a 23% higher chance of causing a crash. And it's equivalent to someone drinking four beers and then getting behind the wheel of the car. Now, before you point fingers at the younger people in the room, Anyone who's ever had a cell phone had better think back honestly on their own experiences. I mean, I remember not long after I got my first cell phone, I was going home after making a hospital call, and a family member, the person I visited, called me wanting to know how they were. And so I spent the next several minutes explaining everything that I had found out when I made that hospital call. And uh, when I finally got done with that call, I realized that I had gone by the exit I was supposed to take about 10 miles ago. <laughs> and I had turned around and go back. Now, I got to thinking about that, it was probably a good thing that nothing happened while I was on the phone. Or I, uh, I might have become one of those statistics. So the fact is, true multitasking is really not possible. And when we frequently switch back and forth from task to task, it actually makes us much less efficient less focused, less productive, and more likely to make mistakes. According to Dr. Chapman, the solution is to focus our attention on one thing at a time. She claims that single tasking produces much better results. It is healthier for us, more efficient to work on tasks sequentially, in other words, one at a time, than to try to attempt to focus on more than one thing at a time. We can either do one thing well and then move on to another, or we can do several things poorly. That's about what it amounts to. Now, if this is true for our brains and for our mental health, then I would submit that it's also true for our spiritual health as well. More than ever, scientists tell us how everything about us is connected and interdependent. The fact is, that's uh, what we think of when we talk about holistic medicine. The whole body, mind, spirit, soul, physicality, all those things. While many churches in America are far less busy than they ought to be, and I would say that's the vast majority, there are some exceptions. There are some churches that fall into that trap of equating busyness with accomplishment and spiritual maturity. Some churches seem to believe that they have to be everything to everyone, and they have so many activities going on in their church that it, it, well, it becomes difficult to schedule anything new on their calendars. Leadership in those churches sometimes um, Tell their folks that they are to be involved in multiple programs for mission, for learning, outreach, evangelism. And if they're not, then they're not carrying their, their weight, they're not pulling their load. In situations like that, it's 
Well, good people can get burned out very quickly. Paul understood how this can happen. And while it is good to stay busy and be about worthwhile things, busyness has become far too big of a problem in our society today. Paul cautions Timothy not to let himself get, get pulled in too many directions at once. And if this happens, he won't be able to stay focused on the things that really matter. Paul cautions Timothy to keep things simple. To, well, to be someone who, in his words, presents himself to God as an approved worker who has no need to be ashamed and who rightly explains the word of truth. We humans, especially in the 21st century, are notorious for taking the simple and turning it into the complicated. Aren't we? If you don't believe what I just said, try getting something done in our legal system. After bringing the Israelites out of slavery in the land of Egypt, God gave them three prophet Moses. Ten simple commandments, right? But after just a few generations, the Jewish leaders took those ten simple commandments and turned them into 613 rules. It's in, read your Bible, it's there. 613 rules that they had to live by. Now when Jesus came along, when challenged by a lawyer, he took those 613 rules and distilled them down into just two simple rules, right? You know what they are. Love the Lord your God above all other things. Love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets, Jesus said. Or in other words, all anyone must do to keep the law of God is to keep those two simple rules. Paul admonishes Timothy just to keep it simple. Focus on the main thing. And he writes this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 12 through 28. Basically it says, if Jesus has been raised from the dead then nothing matters. Excuse me, let me start over. This is important. If Jesus has not been raised from the dead, then nothing matters. But if he has been raised from the dead, however, then nothing else matters. This is the essence of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it is the main thing that we should keep our focus on. Paul was so convinced of this truth that he was willing to suffer hardship, it says, and prison and being chained like a criminal for the sake of the gospel, which he states is the salvation that is in Jesus Christ, made possible by Christ's death and resurrection on the cross. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. It is quite easy to let ourselves get sidetracked in busyness, isn't it? and forget this simple truth. In fact, the sad truth is that in many churches in America today, they seem to have forgotten the reason that they exist. And that their first priority is to share the gospel. Paul gives Timothy some very good advice on how to stay focused on the things that really matter. He tells Timothy that first and foremost, his main task is to proclaim the gospel. Stay focused on the main thing and don't get caught up in trying to multitask, to do all these different things at once. Focus on this message first. I believe we would all do good to take Paul's advice to heart. How is it then that so many churches in this country don't seem to remember the reason that they exist? which is to proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
As one of my colleagues stated, one year in annual conference, it's probably been only 10 years ago, and this subject was kind of on the floor. And he said, let's be sure we keep the main thing the main thing. And it doesn't require multitasking, but rather a clarity of purpose. And the place to begin is to remember why this church exists. It really isn't for us. It's not because we, it's our own little country club. It exists to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. As a church, we need to put together a priority list. Focus our attention on the task at hand. Then we need to set aside the things that are distracting us and taking our time and resources away from what really should be our priority. Paul says, present yourself to God as one proof. Whether we are gathered in worship, working at the food pantry, or involved in some other ministry of this church, it is our first priority to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And to remember that what we should do, our main concern is to first please God, not just please ourselves. We are to be workers who have no need to be ashamed, Jesus said. Whoever is ashamed of me and my works, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when, it come, when he comes in his glory. Luke chapter 9, verses 26. Paul was not ashamed of the gospel, and we should not be ashamed either. Even in this political correct society that we live in, where it has become more important to be nice than to be truthful, we are still to continue to share the gospel, which is the power of God for the salvation of the world. As Paul states in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, this should be our first priority. Finally, be prepared to, as Paul says, rightly explain the truth of the gospel. And this is the antidote for all the distractions around us and the temptation to do too many things at once. This is why it's so important for us to be in worship every week because it gives us a chance for a little downtime and to be with other believers, to reset our priorities and remember what we are to be doing as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Worship helps us to focus on God and encourages us to get rid of some of the distractions that have sidetracked us and drawn us away from the main objective. And the main thing is that, well, it, the main thing that should be at the top of every church's priority list is simply this to go out and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And as Christians, we need to get rid of the excess clutter in our lives, get back to focusing on the main thing. It all comes down to what you really believe. If Jesus has not been raised from the dead, then nothing matters. But if he has been raised from the dead, Nothing else matters. As Christians, I think it's time to get back to focusing on the main thing, making disciples of Jesus Christ. So with that in mind, let me ask, who do you need to talk to this week?